On Close Up today, we'll learn about the dangers of dr driving under the influence. And how you can support Winthrop this weekend. From the Department of Mass Communication at Winthrop University, you're watching Winthrop Close Up. Welcome to Winthrop Close Up. I'm Daisy Burrows. And I'm Megan Mack. Winthrop University and the world alike lost a one-of-a-kind person recently. Reporter Chelsea Vacari sat down with family and friends of Winthrop's very own Scott Ely. Vietnam War veteran, novelist, and English professor Scott Ely passed away last week after struggling with a series of illnesses over the last five years. Ely served in Vietnam when he was exposed to Agent Orange. Doctors say the majority of his illnesses derived from the chemical. Despite his hardships, Ely had many successes, including reviews for his novels and short stories in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and several other places. His wife and him had a home in southern France where they spent every summer. When I asked her what her fondest memory of Scott was, this is what she had to say. My favorite moment was when um, we arrived in Puyvere where I had bought this little house in France and I took him out on the balcony and he looked around and said, I feel as if I'm living in somebody else's biography. Scott also enjoyed outdoor activities such as playing tennis and hunting. Co-workers say that Scott's personality shined through everything that he did. You get to know him, you realize how generous and kind a man he really is. And that was the kind of things you talked to Scott about, was personal stuff and what you enjoyed. And it, it just, we're going to miss him so much because the richness of conversation he contributed, it was just such a beautiful thing. Friends and family of Ely attended a drop-in at his home on Sunday last week. A notebook outside his office was left for students and faculty to write a note for his service. This is Chelsea V. Carey for Winthrop Close-Up. The military funeral will be held on November 15th in Columbia, South Carolina. In college, many students like to party, but how do your drunken actions affect you and others? Reporter Chelsea Brown shows us how a group on campus is turning up on alcohol awareness. Turn up is the newest slang term for getting loose and being wild. It also means having a party that can include drugs or alcohol. Skin Deep's program, Turn Down For What, focused on the consequences and embarrassment that alcohol can cause for college students. Uh, the drinking thing where you had the peer pressure from your parents and your uh, friends to drink, that was kind of rough. I mean, but it's real life. Underage drinking problems such as youth property crime and youth violence cost South Carolina residents more than $1 billion in 2010. As a part of Alcohol Awareness Week, Skin Deep's goal is to build awareness of alcohol-affected situations behind closed doors. Skin Deep even portrayed an anonymous alcoholics meeting. Um, looking at it, you can kind of get like a bias, like an opinion, but like when you actually hear it, like you can kind of step into their shoes and see why they got into that situation. The audience had a chance to participate in a method called in-character processing. Actors who were still in character had the chance to answer questions about their role. Sometimes it's a little nerve-wracking because you never know what they're going to say and um, it's kind of an improv on them because we never know what they're going to ask so we have to kind of on spot think of a way to respond. Non-alcoholic mocktails were served before the show to give students a healthier and safer alternative to drinking alcohol. Make sure to refrain from drinking and driving and don't feel pressured to drink. Chelsea Brown, Winthrop Close-Up. If you do make the choice to drink, make sure you do it safely. Damon Mack explores the penalty for driving under the influence. While drinking is okay for some, it's never okay to get behind the wheel. Drunk driving causes approximately one-third of all traffic fatalities in the United States. And on average, someone in the United States is killed by a drunk driver every 40 minutes. Driving under the influence has had a huge impact on my life. Um, just last summer, my best friend died. She was driving drunk. Thankfully, she didn't kill anyone else but herself, but it was still a very fatal accident and had a huge impact on my life. I had a friend that drove drunk a million times before he got pulled over. When the police came to give him a breathalyzer test, 
and it came up under 0.8 blood alcohol content. He was, he was issued a warning. Then after that, he was scared for his life. He'll never do it again. In South Carolina, if you're under the age of 21, your blood alcohol content should be under 0.2%. If you're over the age of 21, your blood alcohol content should be at 0.8%. Having a designated driver is highly recommended when intoxicated. This will avoid license suspensions, jail time, and death. We are in a university environment here. So you know, we take the safety of our students and our property uh, very, very seriously. And so we rigorously enforce these laws. Um, and we do catch students you know, with you know, alcohol-related violations. This is Damon Mack for Went the Close Up. From dorm rooms to classrooms, some students are abusing prescription drugs to get ahead. Drugs like Adderall and Ritalin make a significant difference to people diagnosed with ADD and ADHD, but not everyone who are taking these have a prescription. Some use these medications to help them study. What many people who take them illegally don't know is that these drugs are in the same class as cocaine and Oxycontin. If people take them who aren't supposed to, like when people buy them from other people, it acts on their body like speed, so it'll speed them up. Whereas with this person with ADHD, if they take them, it slows them down. A big problem is how easy it is to obtain these drugs. All students have to do is visit a doctor, tell them they're having trouble focusing, answer a few questions, and they will have a prescription. Selling these drugs illegally is a felony offense and can land you in jail. Many students have heard of the Winthrop Archives, but not many know exactly what they are. Reporter Cheyenne Lewis went to a recent event to find out. The Archives at Winthrop was established in 1962, and our main purpose is to collect and preserve the history of Winthrop. The Archives find and keep Winthrop memorabilia, but focus on other histories as well. We have other collections too that pertain to South Carolina history and this region, women's history. Um, we have diaries, letters, uh, organizations, papers, all sorts of things. Uh, Not only do they have these pieces of history available for researchers, special displays are put up for the enjoyment of everyone. The Winthrop Archives has a new display coming that will show Winthrop uniforms from the past. For the next three months we're going to have a display of Winthrop uniforms between 1895 and 1910. These uniforms will not be the original ones because they are being made by a graduate student of Winthrop, but it makes it all the more special and unique for the university. For Winthrop Close Up, I'm Cheyenne Lewis. You can check out this new display at the Winthrop Archives Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Up next, a new place students can go to pray. Welcome back. Police say the gunman at a New Jersey mall is, has died of an apparent suicide. Police cars swarmed the Westfield Garden State Plaza Mall after a gunman opened fire there. Witnesses describe hearing several gunshots at the mall and seeing shoppers run for cover. Witnesses describe seeing a man wearing a helmet dressed in all black, firing randomly. No one was hurt and police are still looking for a motive. How safe are our airports? That's the question being asked after a bomb threat in the form of a note was found in the bathroom at Alabama's Birmingham Shoalsworth International Airport. The threat comes on the heels of the recent fatal shooting of a TSA guard at LAX. Authorities evacuated the airport, but no bomb was found. India has launched a rocket to Mars. The country's space research organization launched its orbiter to the red planet, joining NASA, the former Soviet Union, and Europeans in successfully launching a probe to Mars. It will take 10 months for India's Mars orbiter mission to reach the red planet. The probe will explore the planet's surface features, minerals, and atmosphere, and hopefully discover more about the planet's loss of water. German media are reporting that a collection of artwork confiscated by the Nazis has been found in Munich. This is according to German news magazine Focus. The 1,500 pieces of art include works by Picasso. 
Investigators put the value of the collection at a little under $1.4 billion. If confirmed, it would be one of the largest recoveries of looted art. Amongst all of the Christian churches in Rock Hill, a new Muslim mosque has just opened. Reporter Leslie Brown takes us there. Those who practice Islam must pray five times a day. Before Rock Hill opened their new mosque after seven years of construction and fundraising, Rock Hill citizens prayed in a storefront or traveled to Charlotte. We didn't have any place to pray. They had to drive to Charlotte. Now these, after having these, they all feel free. They can come from office, just take one break, small break, and come and pray and go back. Men and women worship separately at the mosque. Also, all women who come to the mosque are required to be covered up. Every Friday, men and women come to the mosque for their second daily prayer. Bedjum says that a lot of Winthrop students come to the mosque. We have, so there have been students, like 50 students, so that they come to pray all Jumma like to make the community bigger because so there are many students that are here, a lot of students that are here. I'm very excited because now I can bring my friends to come that want to know more about Islam. They can ask questions and get a lot of information. We really like it, the new one, you know, rather than the old one. Bejum says that this mosque unites all of the Muslims in this area. It's really wonderful opportunity for all the Muslims in, in Rocky community. The mosque welcomes all people, even those who don't practice Islam. I'm Leslie Brown for One Step Close Up. November is known for turkeys and pumpkin pie, but a Winthrop organization attempts to make it known for other reasons. The Multicultural Student Council is raising awareness about a heritage that has been overlooked. November is National American Heritage Month. In celebration, students gathered in the DiGiorgio Center for some creative arts and crafts. And we felt that making Dreamcatchers would be a creative and fun way to raise awareness about Native American heritage in general. The Multicultural Student Council aims to broaden students' cultural education. With the spring semester quickly approaching and the mass communication banquet only months away, Professor Bonnie Stewart's class is raising money to prepare for the yearly banquet. Students are busy preparing for the big event with a series of fundraisers. This semester, Professor Bonnie Stewart and her class are finding creative ways to scrap up spare change. We're also promoting the uh, jar counting of three different types of jars filled with items and whoever gets the closest wins a Walmart gift card. Class is also selling baked goods, snacks, and drinks in hope that this year's banquet is better than ever. Mass communication students are in for a big surprise this year. I can't wait to see what's in store. As Halloween pumpkins are starting to go bad, I went to learn more about the pumpkin carving tradition. Oh, it's fun to do for Halloween, so I'm glad I get to do it in college. Freshman Kelsey McCormick is in a festive mood as she carves her pumpkin. I'm just going to make it as best I can because I'm not very good at it, but hopefully it's pretty or scary. I don't know, either one. Winthrop University Student Union wanted to give everyone an opportunity to participate. We wanted to do pumpkin carving because it's, a, you know, it's something that not a lot of people get to do, but it's still an American tradition. Many people enjoy carving pumpkins for Halloween, but where did the tradition come from? Jack Lantern, he was lost. He ticked off a witch, and so she sent him to a world of darkness, and he found gourds, and he howled them out to light his path. Senior Zach Christian says no matter what you're carving, just have fun with it. Because it's tradition for Halloween. It's what you do on Halloween. If you're wondering what to do with those pumpkin seeds, here's one suggestion. I'm going to bake the seeds because that's the best. Whether you create a bat, witch, or spooky face with your next pumpkin, you now know a little more about this tradition. There are many pumpkin seed recipes out there. If you have one you like, email the show so we can try it out. Coming up in sports, we'll find out what's attracting students to the West Center.
Welcome back to Winthrop Close-Up. I'm Chelsea Brown with your Eagle Sports Update. As students begin to find new extracurricular activities on campus, Dimitri Williams shows us one that takes you to new heights. Located off the West Center's main lobby stands a 36-foot climbing wall. There are eight different walls ranked in difficulty with tape that maps out different routes you can take. You must be belay certified in order to climb. The belay class isn't very difficult at all. Most people complete it. Almost everyone completes it the first time they try it. Belay clinics are taught every Wednesday and Thursday from 6 to 9, lasting about 20 to 30 minutes. They also teach you techniques on climbing. We ask that you use your legs as much as possible and your arms are just there to hold you onto the wall. It may look intimidating, but one frequent climber says she likes the challenge. My favorite wall are the three inside walls because um, they're really difficult and I feel accomplished when I finish them. The climbing wall is available every day with varying hours along with seven climbing attendants. Take on the challenge by reaching the top. I'm Demetri Williams reporting for Worth of Close Up. You must be at least 18 years old and belay certified in order to con <clears throat> in order to climb. Contact Recreational Services for more information on their extracurricular opportunities. The AP Top 15 is staying consistent this week. This week, college football only saw a few changes in the rankings. Miami lost to FSU 41 to 14, causing them to drop from number 7 to number 14. This allowed Auburn and all all teams following them to move up one spot. The top six remain unchanged. To see the full AP Top 25 rankings and scores of NCAA football games, go to ESPN.com. We've come to the end of our Eagle Sports Update. Let's see what Cheyenne has for us in Arts and Entertainment. Welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Cheyenne Lewis. This week we'll see how thrifting can transform your wardrobe and how joining a band is as simple as drawing from a hat. But first, let's take a look at our YouTube pick of the week, My Girl. There's one sound that y'all should know. What does my girl say? Welcome back to Arts and Entertainment. Do you want to be fashionable but don't want to go broke doing it? Reporter Megan Mack went to find out how to thrift the runway. Delta Sigma Theta's Thrift the Runway was an interactive program that put misconceptions about thrifting to rest. We hosted this event tonight um, in order to teach um, the campus that it's okay to be fashionable for less, that you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money to buy nice things. Designer Davida Galloway taught the audience how to make scarves into shirts and gave tips on how to thrift. We saved so much money without forfeiting style. Students even got to make their own thrifted outfits. The audience was split into teams to showcase what they learned about thrifting by dressing models and competing for the best outfit. At first I was a little apprehensive but it ended up being really fun and I saw people doing all kinds of creative things and ended up looking completely different than I would have ever imagined. It's never too late to spice up your wardrobe and with thrift shops in Rock Hill and Charlotte, stylish finds are right around the corner. For Winter Close Up, I'm Megan Mack. Speaking of thrifting, looks like Oprah Winfrey's biggest yard sale ever was a huge success for both the fans and the media mogul. The own founder's auction, dubbed the Oprah Winfrey Collection and featuring hundreds of her personal items, netted more than $600,000. The sale included antiques, contemporary furnishings, and fine art from all five of her homes. Ever thought of joining a band 
Or how about wondering what music sounds like if a couple of strangers wrote some songs together? Reporter Mike Zumak shows us some of the results. Live music through different bars, venues, even houses. One local promoter was inspired by an out-of-towner to try something outside of the box. It's a very loose concept. You know, we're going to throw all these names, we threw all these names in the hat, 52 names. We picked out 12 random bands and just paired people up and then it was up to them to put their show together. So what makes this experience any more different from putting a band together normally? You know, once you have a deadline, you actually get things done. If you just have a hobby that you're trying to put together, you, you will never succeed in actually finishing that task. But, I mean, it was a guaranteed gig. Um, yeah. Going to have absolutely guaranteed people playing instruments. The 12 groups that are involved in Bands in a Hat will be playing at Courtroom at Gettys November 22nd. The show will be $5. Part of the fun behind the whole experiment is the kind of music people write and with the different influences that they bring to the table. It's just getting together with people that you haven't played with before or even most of the time never met before. I know for a lot of the other bands and stuff. So it's, uh, it's cool to kind of branch out, make some new friends in the process and uh, you know, kind of experiment with people that are you know, into a lot of things that you, know, you are not into or whatever. So it's cool just to kind of I don't know, mingle with the unknown, I guess. Check back with Winter Close Up following the week of the show to catch details about the event. This is Mike Zumak for Winter Close Up. Interested in seeing some live music before then? Check out the courtroom at Gaty's Facebook page for different show lineups. The secret is out. Scandal star Carrie Washington is reportedly expecting her first child with her NFL husband. Sources say she's about four months along, but what we really want to know is will the pregnancy be worked into the season three plot of the ABC hit drama? Perhaps an Olivia and Fitz storyline? A scandal fan can dream well. That wraps up Arts and Entertainment. Be sure to tune in next week for your weekly dose of entertainment. Thanks, Cheyenne. It's that time of year again, Winthrop's homecoming. The time has come for you to show off your eagle spirit. Lauren McCoy tells us how. After a full week of school spirit, it's finally homecoming weekend and Winthrop is starting it off right. Dress to impress for the homecoming party at 9 p.m. in Richardson Ballroom. And there will be a cash bar where you can buy beer or wine. As long as you're over the age of 21, they will be checking IDs as you walk in. All are encouraged to join the promise of this fun night full of celebration. I am more than excited about this weekend. This is my fifth Winthrop homecoming and it's going to be my best because it's my last one as an undergrad and I'm destined to go out with the bang. After starting off your weekend right with the homecoming party, wake up early for some tailgating before the big game. Saturday there'll be opportunity to tailgate so you'll get a chance to eat some food um, and you know kind of hang out before the game outside the Coliseum and then we'll move into the Coliseum and watch our men's basketball team uh, take on their first opponent for this season um, and they're looking pretty sharp so hopefully we can get a, a win and open up the season the right way. Of course students are studying now to have their weekend free to celebrate. Uh, this will be my first winter basketball game so excited to see what comes out of it. I believe we will win yes. I think we will have a great shot on Saturday mainly because of all of the energy that we're trying to build up throughout the week. I'm Lauren McCoy for Winter Close Up. The homecoming game is this Saturday at 4 p.m. Tailgating starts at 11. We hope to see all of you supporting Winthrop and our basketball team. If you have any story ideas, send them on over to the email address listed below. You can also stay in touch by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter at Winthrop Close Up. Have a fun and safe homecoming.